sometimes in 2014 a 32 years old woman who had been married for eight years without a child decided to travel to her hometown in Okofia, Essa South local government area of Eboyin State. And she told her mother she needed a young girl from the village who would travel back to the city with her and live with her as her daughter and also assist her with chores and she would in turn take care of the little girl. Her mother told her not to worry as she was going to get her a little girl from the village to serve that purpose. So her mother approached this family who had a young daughter called Faith Mwaja and requested that the family should give Faith to Nkechi so that Nkechi would take her to the city and take good care of her. Faith's family had no problem giving their little Faith to Nkechi Nyeri. However, they had one condition that Inkechi must, however, fulfill. And that condition was that Inkechi must ensure she enrolled Faith in school when she'd take her to the city, talking of Onicha in Anambra State, where Inkechi was resided. And because Faith, the 12 years old Faith, was already in primary two at the time and was preparing to uh, get into primary three. So, Inkechi Nyeri took Faith to Onicha and Faith's parents had expected that Inkechi would bring Faith to the village each time she's coming to the village so they will get to see their daughter. In 2015, Inkechi Nyeri did not bring Faith to the village. Before then, Faith's mother had Inkechi's mo uh, mobile number so she decided to call Inkechi one day and ask for the well-being of her daughter as every responsible mother should do right so she called in Kechi and asked how they were doing and how her daughter was doing to her greatest shock and Kechi asked her how she got her number and Faith's mother said well you have my number and I also have yours so in Kechi told Faith's mother not to call her again and said she was going to call Faith's mother when she closes from work that day Faith's mother waited for Inkechi's call, but Inkechi never called. And her number was always switched off from that very day, signifying Inkechi changed her mobile number. Now, in 2016, again, Inkechi did not turn up in the village. So Faith's mother became worried and she approached Inkechi's family, asking them to asked to tell Inkechi to bring her daughter back to the village because she had missed her daughter and she needed to see her daughter. They assured her Inkechi was going to come in January. She was patient, she waited to January, but you guessed right, Inkechi did not show again. So Faith's mother became more worried and she decided she was going to take a trip to Onicha and look for her child, even though she had no address of Inkechi because Inkechi's family in the village had refused to give her Inkechi's address in Onicha. So she went on, should I say a wild goose chase? Because I mean, she didn't know where she was going to, but she was hopeful and she went to Onicha. She spent days in Onicha asking around, of course, she didn't get to find out where Inkechi was living, neither did she get to see her daughter Faith. So she went back to the village and she went back to Inkechi's family and pleaded with them to please uh, ask one of their sons who already knew where Inkechi was living in Onicha to take her to Onicha so she would go and see her daughter. But again, the family refused. So Inkechi's mother took a second trip to Onicha hoping that she was going to get lucky and find Inkechi's address that time. But again, that trip was not successful. The mission was not successful and she returned back to the village. This time around, she got back with war because she got back and fought Inkechi's family and said "Is it? it was either they kill her or she was going to kill them because she needed her child. In the process, Inkechi's brothers beat Faith's mother mercilessly just for demanding to see her child and know her child's 
um, whereabouts since 2014. On, in February 2018, Faith was returned to the village. And Ketri's mother, who had been um, waiting eagerly to see her child, got wind of the information that Faith had been returned to the village. So from the farm where she was, she rushed back to Faith's family, in Kechi's family house, and she began to ask, oh, I had my daughter had returned, where is she? She was shocked to have been told that her daughter went out to play. And she said, it's not possible because my daughter left me since 2014. And if she's returning to this village, I know she missed me. The first thing she would do would be to run home and check on us, not to go out play, but play where? She was convinced that Faith was right in that house, so she began to break the doors to different rooms. She said she broke down the door to uh, Nkechi's brother's room. Faith was in there. She broke down another door, but Faith was in there. When she broke down the door to Nkechi's mother's room, there was a little human seated beside the bed. The room was dark, but that child looked disfigured. So this woman, in fear of the horror she had seen, ran out of the room. While she was running out, the little child was screaming, Mommy, it's me, come back, it's me. And she said, that cannot be, I cannot be your mother, you're not my child. And the child said, it's me, it's me, Faith. She had to go back and look very well. She said, Faith, this is not my Faith. This is not the child I gave out in 2014. If you say your Faith, can you tell me what my name is? And Faith said, your name is Ngozi. And she asked her, okay, what's your father's name? Faith said it. What's your grandmother's name? And Faith said it. The woman collapsed. She wept bitterly and she decided it was time to report to the police. I'm sure you're wondering why she was weeping bitterly and why all that act, you know. So this was what happened. Faith had been disfigured. This 12 years old who was given to Inkechi in 2014 to live with her while she cares for her was humiliated, dehumanized, abused, and subjected to all manner of inhuman treatment. Faith had her head, a part of her head had been mutilated, a part of her ear had been mutilated. Her, one of her hands had been destroyed completely, disfigured. And on her lips, her lips was mutilated as well. There were several marks on her body. There were fresh wounds on her body and old scars. That girl had seen her living with Ikechi. So her mother began to ask her, how did all this happen? It was then that Faith recounted her ordeal in the hands of the 32 years old Inkechinyere Batolomi, who was supposed to have taken care of 12 years old Faith while she was in her custody. Since 2014, when Faith got to Inkechi's house in Onicha, Faith never saw the four walls of classrooms. Inkechi beat Faith at the slightest provocation. She she cut her skin in the name of trying to trim her hair. Little Faith recounted how Nkechi would beat her and insert a wood, a, a wood into her private part and how she would use iron on her body, how she would... I can't even begin to. It was terrible. The things that little girl went through in the hands of Inkechi, you cannot even begin to imagine that a woman who has been in search, for a in search of a child for eight years will subject another child to that. Faith also recounted a time where Inkechi forced her to eat her own feces and forced her to drink her own urine. Nkechi did everything to faith but human. Everything horrible she subjected that girl through. Now, 
Ikechi's sister, who was also in Onicha, kept warning her as to how she was treating the little girl to desist from that, but she kept bragging as to how nobody could do anything to her. The sister had gotten fed up of the way Ikechi was treating Faith. That was why she decided to take Faith back to the village in February 2018. So it wasn't even Faith who, Ikechi who took Faith back to the village, it was her sister. Faith also recounted how Ikechi's husband frowned at her maltreating Faith. But there was little the husband could do because according to Faith, the husband Ikechi was bigger than her husband. So apparently the man was maybe scared of her or something, but he couldn't really do much. But she said the husband never beat her and he always complained about the way Faith maltreated her. Now, Faith's mother reported to the police and the police arrested Faith and Nkechi's sister who had brought Faith back to the village. And they went in search for Faith. Of course, she ran away. They went in search of Nkechi rather. Of course, Nkechi ran away when she got news of what had happened in the village, how her sister was arrested. But the police continued to trail her until they got her arrested sometimes in April that very year and all she could say was that faith was stealing her money and when asked how much was this money she said sometimes 100 naira sometimes 200 naira really and she disfigured that child completely the preliminary medical report showed that faith will have to go through series of plastic surgery and it also indicated that there had been some damages to her some of her reproductive organs a little child of 12 years going through such torture when really she didn't have to from someone who craves, who begs God to be a mother herself. How do you expect God then to answer your prayers when you treated the one he gave you the way you did? It's so heartbreaking and at this point I am wondering how do parents just give out their children without even making efforts to know where the child is being taken to? If for any reason you are giving another person your child for your child to live with them, you should make it a duty to travel with them to that address where they are. There should be some sort of serious investigation underground investigation is not enough that oh i know her mother her mother knows me and i give up i give my child i'm sure faith's parents may never forgive themselves for what happened to that little girl they will wish they did things differently unfortunately the hands of time cannot be turned around this is just a call to every parent out there who has their child with someone else and have not made, taken uh, that step to know the address where their child is living, please, it's time for you to pay a visit. If possible, make it a surprise visit. Don't just trust that your child is safe in that person's hands. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we upload our next story. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like it and leave your comments concerning your thoughts about the story we just shared and do well to share this video. In the meantime, take care of yourself, take care of your emotions, take care of your mental health, be kind to yourself and the people around you and always be safe. I remain darkest again, Olunkun, and I love you.